Shalom. Today we're going to talk about the Gollum. You're probably most familiar with a character from the Lord of the Rings. His name is Smeagol, and he is a Gollum. Apparently he is called a Gollum because of the noise that he makes in his throat. He is somewhat less than Hobbit. He's not a human, he's a Hobbit, but somewhat less than. But he was not the first creature to be defined like that. And whether Tolkien took his idea from the Hebrew Gollum or not, we don't know. But the Hebrew Gollum precedes the Hobbit Gollum by many centuries. The concept of the Hebrew Gollum comes from a verb which has these root letters. It's only used once as a verb here in 2 Kings 2.8. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. As we investigate the noun use, we'll see how it's connected. It is used once as a noun in Psalm 139.16. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. So Elijah's mantle, as he wraps it up, is sort of a formless mass. And this is the concept of the golem, the golem, that we read in Psalm 139. Now the Mishnah uses the term for an uncultivated person. And an early citation is from Pirkei Avot. Seven characteristics are there in an uncultivated person, in a golem, or if you're speaking Yiddish, a goylem, and seven in a learned one. The Hebrew is shiva dvarim bagolem, seven things that are in the golem. We'll look at the whole text. There are seven characteristics in a clod. This is the translation used here, a clod, an uneducated or uncultivated person, and seven in a wise man. And it gives you the wise man's characteristics. <clears throat> he does not speak before one who is greater than he in wisdom. He does not break into his fellow's speech and is not hasty to answer. He asks what is relevant, and he answers to the point, and he speaks of the first point first, and of the last point last. And concerning that which he has not heard, he says, I have not heard, and he acknowledges the truth. And the reverse of these characteristics, this is the golem, he's a, a clod. Now the early use of the word golem to mean shapeless mass or in something which is not yet perfectly formed appears in, in the Talmud in Sanhedrin 38b. Rabbi Yochanan bar Chanina says, Daytime is 12 hours long, and the day Adam, the first man, was created, was divided as follows. In the first hour of the day, his dust was gathered. In the second, an undefined figure, a golem, was fashioned. In the third, his limbs were extended. In the fourth, the soul was cast into him. In the fifth, he stood on his legs. In the sixth, he called the creatures by the names he gave them. In the seventh, Eve was paired with him. In the eighth, they arose to the bed two and descended four, that is, Cain and Abel, were immediately born. In the ninth, he was commanded not to eat of the tree of knowledge. This is a little bit out of order that we read in the text of the Tanakh. In the tenth, he sinned. In the eleventh, he was judged. In the twelfth, he was expelled and left the Garden of Eden, as it is stated. But man abides not in honor. He is like the beast that perish, which is a quote, Psalms 49, 13. So we see this is Rabbi Hanina's explanation of how this happened. And he says, Adam did not abide. He did not sleep in a place of honor for even one night. So this comes from about the 3rd century A.D. So this concept of a man being formed out of clay, out of dust, but having not a complete form yet, this is the idea of the golem, the golem. It was believed that a figure of clay could be activated by an ecstatic experience induced by the ritualistic use of various letters of the Hebrew alphabet forming a shem, any one of the names of God wherein the Shem was written on a piece of paper and inserted into the mouth or in the forehead of the golem. And of course, you know that they would be using this yud heh vav -Hey, as a sacred name to animate this figure of clay. Another word that they would use is emet, which means truth. And it was told that if you were trying to deactivate the golem, you could take the aleph off the emet, and that would leave just the word met, 
which means dead, and the golem would cease functioning. So here's a picture of a golem, but he just has golem on his forehead there. In general, the golem does not have the capacity for speech. Another story from the Talmud. Indeed, Rava created a man, a golem, using forces of sanctity. Rava sent his creation before Rabbi Zeira. Rabbi Zeira would speak to him, but he would not reply. Rabbi Zeira said to him, You were created by one of the members of the group, one of the sages. Return to your dust. The most famous golem was created by Rabbi Judah Lo ben Bitzalel of Prague in the 16th century. This golem was designed to protect the people from anti-Semitic attacks and was said to be able to make himself invisible and summon spirits from the dead. I don't know the date of this artwork, but it is meant to be in the style of that 16th century. So it is said that one evening Rabbi Lo forgot to remove the Shem and feared that the golem would desecrate the Sabbath. At that point, the golem's body grew and grew and grew, and he flew into a rage. But Rabbi Lo was able to wrestle him to the ground and remove the Shem, and he put the body of it in the Geniza of the Altnoi Synagogue in Prague. A Geniza is a place where sacred books are kept. We don't throw the books away. We don't burn them. We bury them. So that's where the golem's body was said to be hidden, and the rabbi forbid anyone to go up into the attic. The attic was renovated in 1883, and surprise, there was no evidence of the golem there. In fact, none of the contemporary writings about Rabbi Lo connect him to the creation of a golem. It appears to be a later, perhaps urban legend. Tales of, of creation of, of such being animated clay people were popular in the German and Slavic areas of Europe, and they were popularized by different authors and filmmakers. This sort of myth was likely the source for Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. One of the early expressions was a film done by a German filmmaker in 1920, Der Golem, wie er in die Welt kam, how he came into the world. And Paul Wegner was actually quite well known as an actor, and he directed this film. And here's a still shot from the movie. In fact, he himself played the golem. You can watch the whole movie on YouTube. It's a bit reconstructed. They don't have the whole original movie intact, but all the plot line is filled in. And actually, he did a quite a good job of capturing the essence of the stories and uh, Jewish practice at the time. The second generation of computers that was developed at the Weizmann Institute in Rehovot, Israel, was dubbed Golem Alpha, or Golem the First. That was in 1965. The man who gave it the name was Gershom Sholem, and you can look him up. He's well known in Israeli history. And he drew the parallels between this animated clay figure and this thinking machine. The concept of the Golem continues to be popular in culture. We have some figures here from some games. Dungeons and Dragons and also the video game Final Fantasy repeatedly has a golem 